go. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a filmmaker. To me, there was no higher artistic achievement than that. I watched movies all the time. I watched all the movies. I bought this book. And the Oscars, the Oscars were my Super Bowl. What would I wear? What would I say in my acceptance speech? Would I do Roberto Benigni? Full of Sally Fields? Or play it straight like Hanks? Thank you. But more than anything, I just wanted to make great films. I wanted the big cameras. I wanted the big crew. I wanted to... I wanted to work with the best actors. I wanted to read the best scripts, the, cranes, the locations. I wanted all of that. I wanted to be the version of the filmmaker that I thought was the only version of the filmmaker. The ones with the fucking bow ties. That's what I thought it meant to tell stories. See, if you want to be a writer, all you need is a stack of paper and a pencil. If you want to be a painter, you need a brush and a canvas. You can be the next Picasso. But when I was a teenager, when my filmmaking fantasies were at their peak, you wanted to be a filmmaker, you needed resources, education, you had to go to the right school, you had to have the right you know, you needed money. In order to make movies, you needed all those things. All those things I didn't have. Filmmaking was this exclusive club. It was for the chosen few. So I started to think, maybe this isn't for me. Maybe I'm just not meant to be a filmmaker. Maybe I'm not allowed to be a filmmaker. Maybe it's unrealistic. Maybe I have to find something else to do with my life. But this, but this was, this was my dream. And if there's one thing I know about dreams, it's that to achieve them, you have to stop at nothing. So I spent 10 years chasing it down. I said yes to every opportunity that involved picking up a camera. Bar mitzvah videos, wedding videos, birthday videos. The grind is not glamorous. Getting killed. Getting totally killed here. And this is the trailer I used to live in right there. But I would not, I could not give up. I'm getting the other lane when it's safe, Joe. I went to camp. I mean, we didn't win. I got into something. We didn't win there either. I had my own TV show on HBO. It was on at midnight and nobody actually saw it, but. I got my name on movie posters. I got the badges. I dotted all the T's and crossed all the I's of what it meant to be a traditional filmmaker. All these people are here to see Go Get Some Rosemary. I had, in theory, achieved my dream. It didn't feel like I realized the dream. It felt like I had fit myself into somebody else's version of the dream. And then I was on an airplane. And I realized this isn't it. This isn't why I wanted to be a filmmaker. You have forgotten who you are. It wasn't the red carpets, it wasn't the film festivals, it wasn't the awards, it wasn't the award shows. None of that shit. The more time I spent chasing down the facade of success, the less creating I was actually doing. How can I go back? In fact, it was after winning the biggest award of my career that I just said, fuck it. I just want to make internet videos. I'm going to make a movie every day. A proper daily vlog. Oh, good I'm God. psyched. Now, we live in the future. And chances are there's a camera in your pocket that's good enough for the big screen. But you don't need the big screen. A few hundred people might show up in a movie theater, but put it online, millions. Find an audience. Find a small audience. Slightly less small audience. Find your audience. Tell your story. Start a conversation. Get that idea out of your head and into your video. Make, make again. Make something terrible. Make it slightly better. Make it a lot better. Make it great. Finally, films, movies, videos. The most powerful form of storytelling that's ever existed. Something that used to be entirely out of reach, finally. Filmmaking is now ours. Filmmaking is a sport. This is the new party, and now, Everyone's invited. Was that good?